What I'm going to try to do, again, because I think it's really important, is to position hand hygiene in the context of various uh, IPC guidelines that WHO has developed. And as you, we remarked earlier, there are a number of areas where we still need to progress and provide more guidance, including for monitoring, as we said. Um, but certainly this one that you, you've got as a gift today is quite a milestone, um, I think. Um, at least this is what has been said, uh, because uh, for the first time we have tried to identify what are the core components of effective IPC programs according to the evidence, but also according to the experience, the expertise of people around the world, people working in countries, people like you working in the field, etc. cetera. Um, so this was uh, in, in, with the aim of preventing HAIs, but also looking at uh, healthcare associated antimicrobial resistance and what makes uh, effective IPC programs uh, in uh, preventing transmission of AMR. So first point I wanted to let you know is again to comment on the evidence because uh, we did uh, two massive systematic reviews of the most important topics in IPC at the facility and at the national level, trying to understand what are these elements that make programs effective in actually reducing infections, reducing uh, AMR transmission. At the facility level, we relied on a previous uh, systematic review, which we updated. And uh, overall, we had uh, almost 88,000 hits in this systematic review but only 119 studies were acceptable from uh, the quality perspective according to a system that is used uh, uh, by Cochrane. Um, and at the national level, um, we had uh, about uh, 10,000 hits uh, and only 26 studies that were included according to the quality assessment which makes this, uh, this guideline based on 145 studies in all the IPC literature. So this gives you the idea of uh, how difficult it is to then develop evidence-based guidelines. But we succeeded in doing this, uh, and I think it's important for uh, decision makers, but also for all of us to be aware uh, what is uh, evidence-based in our field. So the systematic reviews have been published uh, in different papers. You can retrieve them. Um, and these are the core components uh, that have been identified uh, at the national and facility level. So basically, uh, the first six are uh, valid for the national level and the facility level. And there are two additional ones that are only for the facility level. And as you can see, uh, there are 11 evidence-based recommendations, which means that there was enough evidence to really um, support the recommendations and three good practice statements. We will talk about these tomorrow, but um, out of these eight important elements, for uh, effective IPC programs, I would like to highlight for you where hand hygiene positions. Um, and you will see that it has a very important role. First of all, in these guidelines, we have two recommendations that are explicitly related to hand hygiene. One is uh, about monitoring hand hygiene at the national level. So this is now a strong recommendation by WHO based on evidence, actually only on one randomized control trial, but experts really considered that uh, the, they wanted to make a strong recommendation on this. And I'm also pleased to let you know that, as I said, you are pioneers because uh, this indicator is now recommended by WHO in the context of national action plans for AMR. So we will advocate for all countries to monitor hand hygiene at the national level. Um, <clears throat> so this is the first one. The second one 
is um, in the context of the eighth component, which is about the built environment. So what is the infrastructure, the conditions that make an IPC program effective? And within that component, there is a, a sub-recommendation that is based on evidence related to the importance of providing equipment, materials at the point of care uh, for, for making uh, hand hygiene uh, feasible um, at the point of care. Um, in addition to these two recommendations that are really specifically related to hand hygiene, uh, Basically, uh, overall, um, in addition to those two areas, 44% uh, of the evidence underpinning these guidelines are, is related to hand hygiene studies. So this is quite relevant, um, especially for one of the core components, which uh, I will highlight in a second, that is about implementing IPC program by using multimodal strategies. But also, you can see in terms of recommendations on IPC guidelines, education, the concepts are that hand hygiene guidelines are among the guidelines in IPC that must be available at the national and at the facility level. Uh, the second aspect is education. And in the recommendation itself, we stress what you are doing and you were talking about, which is practical education at the bedside based on feedback uh, about hand hygiene compliance data. Um, so this is uh, just a quick summary, but uh, in terms of um, multi-modal uh, improvement strategies, as I said, this is, first of all, this is the first time we have a recommendation in IPC about how to implement, not what to implement. How to do implementation by using complex approaches, interconnected components or elements that you experimented very well in the field of health hygiene, but we believe are applicable to any IPC intervention. And um, as I said, this is the most, uh, the recommendation that is most supported by evidence. 44 studies were included according to the quality selection. And of these, the vast majority, as you can see, 64% are studies where the intervention was hand hygiene to reduce MRSA, to reduce uh, uh, other aspects. Uh, other infections or other AMR aspects. Uh, and in addition, we also identified other studies, not those which were acceptable for the quality, but also studies that were lower quality. And again, there were an additional number um, uh, related to hand hygiene. Um, and among these, all these studies, uh, supporting the evidence on multimodal strategies, hand hygiene, comp hand hygiene improvement uh, was uh, shown to lead, as I was saying in my previous presentation, to, hand to in improvement of hand hygiene compliance, reduction of MRSA, and reduction of HAIs overall. So, and I'm talking about studies which have hand hygiene as the only main intervention. I'm not talking about studies where hand hygiene is part of a bundle or of multiple other interventions. So among these studies, the successful elements are those that, again, you are implementing, were mentioned uh, many times today. So the accessibility of alcohol-based and drug, having targeted training, and I, I add what I said earlier, practical training, bedside training, embedded in feedback, et cetera. Then all those elements that make uh, the safety culture, so having role models, champions, leadership commitment, positive reinforcement, but also uh, campaigning and marketing, and incentives which can be of various type, including financial at the level of the hospital, obviously, not at the level of the, of the individual. Um, it's interesting, when we talk about uh, influence of hand hygiene in uh, improving uh, uh, the fight uh, against AMR, 
This is a very recent uh, systematic review and meta-analysis which explored the role of uh, various interventions and mainly antimicrobial stewardship in reducing uh, MDROs in healthcare. And the only aspect I wanted you to note is the fact that in the multivariate analysis where they explored the role of antimicrobial stewardship alone and then added to uh, IPC uh, practices or added to hand hygiene, uh, there was an increased effect compared to antimicrobial stewardship alone. So the reduction was uh, by 19% uh, when, when you have only uh, antimicrobial stewardship, um, by 39% when uh, there was uh, added IPC practices and with hand hygiene added by 66%. So it is really remarkable uh, according to this uh, very recent systematic review. So the second uh, guideline I wanted to highlight is this one which we issued last year, SSI prevention uh, guidelines which include many recommendations. One is on hand hygiene I'm not going to go into details, but just to say that uh, hand hygiene in, in surgery, and especially the surgical hand preparation before the operation, is a strong recommendation where, in this case, we explored what is the most appropriate technique, and uh, we found out that uh, hand scrubbing with uh, antimicrobial so soap and water is uh, equivalent, uh, as effective as alcohol-based hand rub uh, before the operation. This is based on three RCTs and three observational studies. Uh, and this is one of the reasons uh, uh, why we tend now to, to promote alcohol-based hand rubbing um, uh, in, uh, in the OR because uh, there are several advantages that are similar to using hand hygiene in the world, as you know. Um, and there are other aspects which we don't have time uh, to go into details, but in terms of these guidelines, and in particular this recommendation, for instance, I would like to highlight how do we recommend to translate into practice. Um, we as, as for other recommendations in, su in surgical site infection prevention, we want to look at the patient journey uh, throughout uh, the, the, the hospital, but even before and after, and highlight where hand hygiene is key, so not only the surgical uh, hand preparation, but also hand hygiene in surgical services. And then, once again, use the classical multimodal strategy and propose tools to embed um, hand hygiene best practices in surgical services, as I said, including the surgical harm preparations. There are countries where uh, alcohol-based hand rubs are not available, so we recommend local production. And this is a modif modified formulation compared to the classical hand hygiene formulation uh, by WHO because there have been studies showing that our previous formulation was not sufficiently uh, effective uh, for um, efficacious actually for surgical hand preparation. Uh, for education and training we have a video which shows uh, how you perform the technique appropriately, uh, the surgical hand preparation technique, and a poster. And then monitoring the use of a normal monitoring system, but also now we are developing a form for monitoring the quality of surgical hand preparation in the OR. Reminders and communications, this is an example. You know that uh, we, we did um, the focus on surgical site infection prevention last year. And uh, this poster, I hope you have it in mind and you use it because this is uh, uh, the five moments adapted to the uh, wound care. Uh, using various tools uh, to address the culture in the surgical services. Again, we don't have time to go into details, but we have tested some tools and are using some tools uh, for specifically for those uh, surgical services. 
And the last guideline um, I wanted to mention are these ones that Lindsay mentioned earlier, just issued last uh, this week, um, that include eight recommendations. Uh, again, we will talk about them uh, more into details tomorrow. But hand hygiene has an important role. One, because the first recommendation is about the need of uh, preventing um, um, gram-negative uh, uh, carbapenem-resistant organisms uh, by using a bundle or a multimodal strategy of, in of IPC intervention and not single aspects. Uh, and hand hygiene is a pillar of this multimodal strategy. And then hand hygiene is tackled in these guidelines as a, as a standing alone recommendation again. So uh, this is based uh, on a systematic review. Uh, and as I said, this is the uh, multimodal strategy that is recommended based on hand hygiene, surveillance, counter precautions, isolation or cohorting, and environmental cleaning as the key pillars. But the guidelines also tackle other recommendations, and we will see that tomorrow, which go beyond these five key pillars of a, of a strategy for uh, reducing the spread of these germs. And in terms of hand hygiene, um, again, uh, in this context specifically, hand hygiene improvement or strengthening um, uh, improvement strategies is a strong recommendation, uh, and it also refers and recalls the hand hygiene guidelines. What is the evidence? Uh, so overall, uh, these guidelines overall have 18 studies that have been identified and accepted in terms of the quality of the evidence. It's interesting to see that most of these interventions uh, included hand hygiene as one of the elements of approaches to reduce these, ger these germs. In particular, for CRE and CRAB, you can see that hand hygiene was included in most uh, studies, and most of these have documented a significant reduction of uh, CRE or CRAB outcomes, uh, whereas for Pseudomonas aeruginosa, uh, one out of three studies included hand hygiene, explicitly at least. Um, in terms of uh, the focus of this recommendation, if you read the chapter, it will recall the key principles of hand hygiene improvement uh, and monitoring that you all know very well. So again, uh, this is a, a way of, see, of, of, of seeing hand hygiene embedded in uh, specific approaches to reducing specific germs. So it's important for us as IPC specialists to be able to foster hand hygiene also with different disciplines and colleagues in the context of broader and more complex IPC interventions. So this is the key message I wanted to give. And thank you for your attention and my team for the incredible efforts that they have made to develop these guidelines. But a special thank to Lindsay because uh, for the core components, he was the chair of the guideline uh, development group, and uh, for the CRE, uh, CRAB, and Pseudomonas guidelines, he has been really the chair and the writer of these guidelines. Thank you.